Hello, this tutorial explains how to use the new capabilities of logic extensions that can accept arrays as inputs and return arrays as outputs for efficient iterative processing. Let's consider a scenario where you want to calculate the profit margin for a set of items. Let's create a logic extension and define an input and an output array in the data structure. Iterate over the array and calculate profit margin for each row. Populate an output array with item and profit margin for each row and then test the logic extension. Access the Orchid Data Studio and create a new logic extension. Enter the name as Calculate Profit Margin. Let's add a new array to the data structure and name it as Item List. Now let's add a new data dictionary item. Notice that in the Add to Array drop-down list, the Item List array is already selected. Let's add the item number LITM to the item list array. Here, let's change the name of the new data dictionary item as item number. Similarly, let's add unit cost and unit price to the array. Now, let's add another array for output and name the array as Profit Margin List. Add item and profit margin to the Profit Margin List array. Before adding these data dictionary items, make sure that the Profit Margin List array is selected in the Add to Array field. Now, let's change the input-output type for the profit margin list array as output only. Here, in the logic extension design page, let's add a new array function. Since we want to work with the item list array, let's select item list in the array field. We have the option to choose an array function or iterate over the array. For this scenario, we want to iterate over the item list array and generate a code to loop through the array. When we iterate over an array, we can see that the system creates an item list counter variable and initializes it to zero. We can view this variable in the variables tab of the logic extension page. The system also creates a while loop that iterates while item list counter is less than item list length. At the start of the loop, the system gets a row from the item list array based on item list counter. Note that there is one set of variables available for the columns of an array. The getRow function will populate all the variables from the index specified, which in this case is set to the variable item list counter. At the end of the loop, the system increments item list counter by 1 to get the next row from the array during the next iteration. Now let's add an assignment statement here to increment the counter and then map the parameters. Select item from the profit margin list array for the target field and map it to the item number in the item list array in the source field. Now let's create mappings to calculate the profit margin. Select profit margin in the profit margin list array using the right panel to set the target. In the source field, let's insert the subtract math function. Here, let's select the unit price and then unit cost, both from the item list array, as parameters for the subtract function. Next, let's create a statement to divide profit margin by unit price. Now, let's add another statement to set profit margin to profit margin times 100. As the last statement, let's set profit margin to profit margin rounded to one decimal place using the round math function.
Let's close the assignment builder. Here, let's add an array function just below the assignment block we created to calculate profit margin. Select profit margin list from the array drop-down menu. Here, let's choose append row to add the row to the profit margin list array. Now, let's test the logic extension. Here, we can add test values for input. To get a positive profit margin, make sure that the value you enter for unit price is greater than the value in unit cost. Now, we can see the JSON response. We can also view the profit margin output array data in a table. Here, we can see the results with the profit margin for each item. We can also add this logic extension to an orchestration. In this tutorial, we learned how to add an array function to the logic extension and how logic extensions can accept arrays as inputs and return arrays as outputs. For more information, visit us at learnjd.com. Thanks for watching.